Hey fans, so here we are at the Forney Transportation Museum in Denver, Colorado, and we're going to be doing a quick walking tour of Big Boy number 4005. Um, 4005 was part of the first class of 20 Big Boy locomotives numbered 4000 to 4019, um, delivered in 1941, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it was donated to the Forney Transportation Museum and now resides indoors after being outdoors for quite a number of years. So what we're looking at is the pilot section of the locomotive. You have the steam driven air compressors here. Um, the compressor intercoolers are behind the pilot case. Um, as originally built, you may have seen the pictures, the coolers were actually fin mounted coolers uh, on the handrails here. Those were, sub uh, sub those were susceptible to breakage, so they finally, they moved them, they replaced them with a more proven design and stuffed them behind the uh, pilot face here. First set of cylinders, big boy locomotive is a 4AA4 locomotive, which means there's four wheels on the pilot truck. You got um, eight wheels on the first engine unit, eight wheels on the second engine unit, and four wheels on the trailing truck underneath the firebox. Um, here in the first drive unit, you can see the wall shirts valve gear setup. Um, this device here, this chain driven device is actually the first, a part of the first pair of four Nathan DV7 automatic lubricators. Uh, this chain is not original. When delivered, these locomotives had um, a system of link arms that was driven off of the uh, valve gear to power the uh, lubricator, but that link arm setup for the front engine um, was susceptible to breakage at higher speeds, so they replaced it with this uh, chain driven setup in the early 50s. Up top, you can't really see it from this angle, you have the smokestack and the whistle, um, the bells in the front. There's a build plate here. Not really, there's an equipment truss plate. Can't really see that. You got the uh, jointed uh, steam tubes, the steam piping to the front set of cylinders. Um, as an articulated locomotive, the front engine unit and the pilot truck do swing freely from the uh, boiler and the rear engine unit. Um, it allows the uh, locomotive to negotiate curves as tight as 20 degrees. Get the first of several air tanks on the locomotive here. Back onto the second set of cylinders. Here we have an image of the articulated uh, connection the pin that is actually located in here. Back onto the second engine unit, you have um, the Alco reverse gear um, that is controlled in the cab with the uh, reverse lever. Um, this device uh, allows the engineer to select the uh, position of the valve gear. Um, right now it is in neutral, so if the locomotive were to roll, the valve gear would not be actuated. Um, as you come down, this is the forward uh, quadrant of the reverse gear, and as, as if you move the rod up, this is the reverse quadrant of the reverse gear. Full reverse on a big boy locomotive is uh, either 81 or 82% uh, cut off. And here you have the enormous firebox, um, which actually sits over the uh, rear two drivers of the rear engine. Um, the big boys were designed to burn the coal from the uh, mines in Wyoming. Uh, the, the heat index of the coal, um, the BTUs were quite a bit lower than coal used by Eastern Railroads, uh, which necessitated the uh, larger firebox.
We got the um, the grate, uh, the uh, wheels for for emptying the grates. I got a brake cylinder for the rear truck. Then right here you have the um, the brake, the air brake uh, equipment. Um, these are New York Air Brake Schedule Eight Dash ET air brakes. Um, And down here you have your uh, the piping for the uh, boiler blowdown. Down here next to the blowdown, you also have the uh, Nathan live steam injector, which is controlled by the engineer. Um, a little bit later, we'll hop on up into the uh, cab and we'll take a look at some of the controls in there. Um, here we have the locomotive's number and the locomotive class. Um, so this one is, you can see this is locomotive number 4005, uh, 4884 uh, is the wheel arrangement. This should be a dash one, so this is not actually correct, since this was the first series of locomotives. Uh, so this should be 4884 dash one. Um, dash two locomotives were from the second series numbering 4020 to 4024. Uh, 68 is the drive wheel diameter in inches. You got uh, 23 and 3 quarter inch uh, bore cylinders with 32 inch stroke. Uh, 540,000 pounds on the drive wheels. And then the MB stands for the type of stoker that was used on this locomotive. Um, you can sort of barely see it here. I don't have the lighting set up to really show you, uh, but that tube there, that is the stoker, that is the stoker uh, auger coming from the tender into the firebox. Back here you have the large 14-wheel uh, centipede tender, 25 ton of coal, 25,000 gallons of water. Um, now you can sort of just see on top this is coal, metal coal boards that Union Pacific added on to the uh, locomotive tenders after they were delivered, adding about four ton coal capacity to the tender, raising it from uh, 25, uh, excuse me, that's 28 tons of coal. So, uh, amend my previous statement, it's 28 tons of coal and 25,000 gallons of water as built. So you get the coal boards here, uh, extra four ton of coal brings you up to 32 tons of coal. Take a walk around the left point. Climb back up so we can get into the cab. Here's a nice diagram um, of the locomotive. It shows you basically where pretty much each part of the locomotive is detailed. It's pretty neat. This diagram actually you can purchase online if you look hard enough. So you got the firebox here. steam dome, the boilers here, their flues, superheater piping, piping going down into the cylinders, and then you got your smoke box, your whistle is up here. This is the based off the original drawing, so those there are those uh, fin type coolers for the the after coolers for the uh, steam driven air compressors.
So we come up on the uh, left side of the locomotive, get it up a little bit of elevation. You can see those coal boards. down the left side of the locomotive. We'll take a quick this is that lubricator that was missing from the other side. As you can see the rear engine lubricator is still driven by the original uh, rod pin setup. Uh, it was a, used a shorter rod so it wasn't susceptible to breakage so they never needed to replace that. Let's take a step on up into the cab. So before we look in the cab, let's swing right and take a peek inside the uh, enormous coal bunker of the tender. Um, so you can see this is where those 32 ton of coal would have sat. And down here we have the stoker screw that would have picked up the coal and carried it forward underneath this plate and underneath the cab deck and into the firebox that you can see in here. Now, inside we have the cab controls, left side we have the fireman's uh, seat and controls, we have the um, the Alesco exhaust steam injector controls here, um, you got your boiler pressure gauge and stoker steam pressure gauges on the uh, exhaust steam injector gauges I would assume. You have um, steam heat valve up top, apparently. I was not aware of this, but apparently the big boys have uh, capability to provide steam heat to passenger consoles, which sort of makes sense since there would be rare occasions that they would be put on passenger trains. Um, very rare occasions. Um, you have your... Uh, lower valve for the um i believe i think that's yeah that's for so that's so the blower valve is to induce artificial draft in uh through the locomotive firebox when the uh, throttle is shut off um then you have down here your stoker jet controls um so the stoker jets basically use the steam from the boiler to uh, distribute the coal within the firebox after it is uh, pushed into the firebox by the stoker screw. Um, and we have our uh, we have our four water glasses. Um, so Big Boy uses uh, two sets of glasses um, at different heights to allow the locomotive to traverse a mountainous terrain. Um, one set of uh, water glasses is used for uphill operation and the other set is used for downhill operation. We got our dynamo steam controls. The dynamo is the steam generator that uh, generates the power for the uh, lights on the locomotive um, any other, and any other electrical appliances that would be used. Then on the right side in here we have the engineer's controls. We have our, the large gauge here is your boiler pressure gauge. I want to say the smaller gauge down here, that is your cylinder back pressure gauge. And then you have what I believe is the speedometer up here. Your throttle lever, whistle cord, um, your reverse gear, and then your brake stand. Down here is the controls for the uh, live steam injector. It's cute, they have oil cans in here. Let's see if we can get a slightly better view. We squeeze over this way.
It's amazing to think that one of these locomotives actually operates now. Albeit uh, as an oil burner, but the controls would not have changed terribly much aside from the uh, removal of the stoker jets and the addition of a uh, oil oil feed valve and an atomizer. Step back off out of the cab. You can see the uh, control lever for the Lesco exhaust steam injector right here. It's current. That's interesting. They currently it's currently in the open position. Um, so we'll take a walk down the locomotive to the exhaust steam injector. Have a couple more air tanks here. There's a nice model uh, G scale model of the 4005 down here. Has the uh, smoke hood. Raised. Interesting. So here's again the other chain driven DV7 lubricator. Move it up right here. If I can get that sun glare out of the way, we have the exhaust steam injector. So this uh, device uses exhaust steam from the uh, smoke box uh, to inject water from the tender into the boiler. Up here now you can see the uh, after coolers for the um, for the air for the steam driven air compressor, and then the other side to that air compressor right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short little walking tour. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see. You.